Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoy it or learn something from the video, consider liking it and subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, coding and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So today I'm going to be showing you how the Node Wrangler add-on works. I'm going to be uh, using this as a tips and trick or a tip and trick. A tip or trick, I guess you could say, in uh, Tips and Tricks Volume 11 coming up this Thursday, which is going to be much higher quality because I'm taking a new stab at the way I do my tips and tricks every Thursday. But anyways, I wanted to show you how the uh, Node Wrangler works. You may have it enabled and never used it before, but I know that you've definitely seen an image of it being used before and wondered maybe, how does that guy do that? Is that in Blender or is that just Photoshopping? So I'm going to show you how it works. I'm using the uh, December December 16th build of uh, the Blender 2.73 beta, so some things may be slightly different, but it is still very stable. You need to enable the add-on first, so go to your user preferences and under add-on, uh, just search up Node Wrangler, and you'll see it's Node Wrangler aka Node's Efficiency Tools, and that actually describes it very well. It increases your efficiency big time in when it comes to nodes and I spend a lot of time tweaking my material so this saves you huge time when it comes to your workflow so just check it off and then uh, save your user settings and you're good to go this add-on is also uh, full of hotkeys so you can also press the show hotkey list and this is one of the few add-ons that actually does this and it shows you all of these hotkeys that are they're only actually available to you when you're um, using it in the node editor so none of these actually overlap but you can see there's a ton of hotkeys that you can that you can learn or most of them you don't need to know but there's a few that are useful like say um change blend type mix or swap outputs or lazy mix or lazy connect or switch node type menu shift s that's a good one actually yeah shift s is probably the first one you should learn so uh just anyway save user settings keep shift s in mind i'm going to turn on screencast keys for you guys although i don't think we'll be using too many hotkeys anyway so let's add a material to our cube so i'm just going to call this material cube dot mat all right so let's bring up the note editor typical note editor blah 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 pretty boring however if you open up the end panel by stock you just have these things i don't even think you have a lot of these things but uh with the node wrangler enabled you have all these different things so here's some of the things you can do with it uh let's say that you have a standard uh setup like this so you have your diffuse and it, let's say our let's say our cube is some sort of green color and let's say that we have a glossy shader to add some reflections and you want to add these together well, a quick way to do that is to select both of them, either by shift clicking both of them, or just box selecting, or brush selecting. Just go merge selected nodes, use shaders, mix. You can also merge selected nodes, use shaders, add. And if you're, you were using something with values, you could also go to uh, math nodes and you could do something like multiply. So there you go. That's very, very, very useful. And let's say there's another way to do that. Let's say you do a uh, mix uh, shader like that and see how it connects everything for you. Very handy. But let's say uh, you decide that you want an add shader instead. Now you could delete that and add the add shader in and then reconnect everything. Or you can just go switch node type shader add shader and it'll instantly change it from a mix to an add shader and uh, that shift s is also the hotkey for it so anytime i have one selected i just have to hit shift s and i can change it and i don't have to have the end panel open for that so if i want to change glossy to say translucent i just go shift s change to shader translucent where are you they're changing things in this version translucent there it is just like that so that's pretty cool 
Uh, another thing you can do, and this is where you've probably seen it before and wondered, like, how did they do that? So let's say, actually, I'm going to load up a new scene very quickly to show this off really well. So I'm going to open it. So here's a plug for Andrew Price's uh, Architecture Academy. Turn it on rendered. But what are we going to work with? Well, it doesn't really matter. Let's work with the blanket. That's a good one. So the blanket close. So I'm going to set up a render border again. Whoops. Shift B is for that, but it doesn't work. And that pisses me off, actually. Hey, it worked for once. That never works for me. Wow. Okay, I'm shocked. That never works for me. Usually it just zooms it in. So yeah, I'm just going to render that, because obviously it's still slow. This, this is a huge scene. So let's open up the node editor. We're back to where we were. Now I have a very complicated node set up just for this blanket. So let me uh, let me hide, unhide some of these, sorry. Just so that we can uh, get it a little bit busier looking. And just to make it even better, I'm just going to add some fake bump mapping. Alright, so let's say you have a complicated node set up like this. And you have no idea what's going on. So what you can do is you can you can uh, you can frame things and like I said you've probably seen this before so I'm just gonna zoom out you may not be able to read these let me see if I can get some more screen real estate there we go now we can see things I'll throw this over to the end I'll throw this beside it I could use snapping but just throw it over there put my image texture there all right, so all you do is say select these three right here since this deals with my image texture how it's mapped It's ten times bigger and where the texture texture coordinates can't come from it comes from the UV unwrap So what I do is I hit frame selected and it now frames it all so okay That's kind of cool that organizes a bit, but you can give it a color. So let's say I gonna do all my image texture setups in yellow so I'd maybe give it some sort of yellow color so I know that all image texture setups are in yellow and then I can label it I can say image texture setup and I could even go a bit further and since this is just a diffuse image texture setup I could go diff image texture to setup or I could go Color for color image texture setup, but I use I use a uh, diff because that seems that's the industry standard in my opinion. So yeah, my image texture setup for my diffuse. So it's just like that. You can change the size of the label. I think that's a stock blender thing. But uh, here's something else too. Let's say you uh, have your mapping node here. You can go to the node wrangler and you can modify the label. Uh, let's hit modify labels. And let's add to the beginning diff texture and add to the end. So it'll be diff texture mapping. I'll add node. Make sure you add your spaces in here, otherwise, it'll put them all together as one word. And then hit OK. So now it's my diff texture node. Well, I got rid of mapping. I forget that I forgot that it does that, so uh, now I have to clear it. So if you make a mistake, just hit clear label and it'll go back to stock. So let's modify labels again. So add to be the beginning diff texture node oh mapping. Actually let's just do that and hit OK. So now we have diff texture mapping. Okay. Let's go modify labels. Let's say we wanted to add something to the end. We could add space node. Now what's my diff texture mapping node? And we can also add something to the beginning, obviously. You can add to the beginning, uh, say, number one. So this is my first uh, diffuse texture mapping node. And um, you can also, obviously, you can replace. So instead, let's say instead of diff, let's say this was my um, specular map, I could go replace diff with spec. Hit OK. And it's now my number one spec texture mapping node. And if I decide, ah, I'll just stick with stock, just hit clear label. So that's another another cool thing that it does. Lastly, um, well not lastly, but you can also do things such as swap nodes. So we have this mix node, and we have the the orange to blue t uh, hue saturation texture changer and whatever thing <laughs> so let's say you had both of these so let's select them both so the first one 
this the hue saturation node is into color one and the mix node is into color two so that the different node inputs so if you want to swap those quickly you could just erase them and you could change them manually or you could just select your nodes and just hit swap links except that's not going to work for this why not is it because it's hidden so i select that node and that node yeah there we go swap links see how it just swaps them for some reason it's also doing it here that's kind of a pain in the butt but i think the hue saturation value is uh maybe a bad choice for this if i had say two come on let's say i just had some other shader say an add shader and i had it on the bottom and i said oh that's the wrong weight all you gotta do is swap them you can also uh undo outputs so just hit the pat detach outputs and there's no long all this no longer applies to my material outputs because i've detached the output but i can also connect to output just like that and it'll it'll choose the proper output to connect to what else does this do um reload images all that does is just make sure all your image textures are uh, set up properly from where they are in your hard drive uh delete unused nodes will get rid of any extraneous nodes that you haven't used maybe you have a node hiding off somewhere that you were going to use but you forgot about it'll delete anything that's not connected to anything else um add texture setup that's a useful one so let me uh load up a stock scene again we just have our cube let's just add another stock material and then go into the node editor all right so this is cool so obviously let's say we had the cube uv unwrapped um and then you wanted to add your your texture that you went and created in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever. Instead of adding all the stuff, all you do is you select your diffuse texture and hit add texture setup and it instantly sets up a texture setup. And you can go a step further and hit frame selected and and call it texture setup. Or if I could type today. And there you have it. It instantly sets everything up. All you have to do is open up your image texture. And if it's not UV unwrapped, all you have to do is change from UV to generated. Just like that. And so now you instantly have your texture coordinates, which in recent versions you don't really need. But you do need sometimes. You have your mapping nodes. So if you want to scale it or rotate it or whatever. And you have your image texture. And obviously this can be repeated over and over and over. So maybe this one is my diffuse texture setup and then let's say I had another one or sorry not a diffuse here's a good thing so I don't want diffuse so I'm gonna hit shift s to switch to a glossy and then I would hit add texture setup let's frame it I'll hit uh, this will be my spec texture setup I have my material outputs. Now I'm going to select both of these. I'm just showing you how useful this is. I'm going to I'm going to merge selected nodes using shaders mix. And there you have it. We now have our spec map set up into our glossy which is mixed with our diffuse which is bringing in our diffuse texture setup which finally all goes out to the material output. And then you could even say take these and frame them. You could call this, I'm going to move that because it's overlapping, you could you could call this uh, color slash specularity mix, mixer setup, you could frame this, final output. Again, let's say that all of our um, texture setup, like our texture setup frames, let's say we're making them all red. You can also just drag and drop a color, uh, maybe not. Just like that. But if you did have a color, you can just drag and drop it. Cool little thing to know. But yeah, let's see all our 
diffuse texture setups are in uh, red. So just like that. Let's say your mix setups are all in blue. And let's say all your outputs are in, let's say, pink. So just like that, it makes it much more readable. For presentation purposes, it makes it much easier for the end user that you're trying to present it to or send it to or whatever. It makes it easier for them to understand what everything's doing. And it makes it easier for you in the end. You know you know what everything's set up to do. So it makes everything cleaner and easier to read. And again, lastly, you can just press H to hide things and clean it up. And I would say that is a pretty clean setup for our material just like that so yeah that's basically what the node wrangler does the only thing that i wish they had and maybe maybe uh the next version's gonna have it maybe i'm just not noticing it and maybe i'm just missing it but i wish you could change the color of the text in your frames because it's just the stock gray the same color as the background and so that kind of sucks <laughs> so yeah anyways that's about all i have i just wanted to show that off really quickly so anyways Thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Also on BlenderTech.com slash blog, I'm starting to release uh, some models that you can download free of use for any project as long as it's uh, uh, not making any more than $1,000. It's f completely free to use 100%. Also, um, we're now on Twitter at twitter.com slash blender underscore tech. That's at blender underscore tech. And Facebook at facebook.com slash blender tech page. All one word. If you want a hard copy of our videos, just let us know. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can improve based on community input. We also take requests. So see you next time. Remember, create your way.